Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Lincoln Rhyme, a great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I'm going to be talking about both episodes, so I'm just going to kind of be trying to run through everything in order. So, uh, But nevertheless, the fact of the matter is we're picking up. The fact is, well, we know, you know, uh, the Bone Collector's real identity, or at least our character, you know, Lincoln and the team know him. It's Peter. They show up at Peter's place, and lo and behold, whose body's waiting is Danielle's. I wasn't expecting that, because I would have expected, like, maybe he would have disposed of her body like he did the others. But to be fair, Danielle was different. She wasn't like any other victim he ended up having. So it's just, he kind of treated her body with respect, because the sad thing is, he still cared about it. Because we saw him have that, you know, like, a little saw and everything. So I thought, like, okay, so I thought he was going to cut her body up and stuff like that. I figured he would probably end up disposing of her body like he did everyone else's bodies, apparently, in an incinerator. But it turns out, no. Uh, she was kind of meant to be a display because it's meant to be like almost like a middle finger to Lincoln and them because it's like this is what you made me do and because of that I'm going wild like you forced me to do this and everything um, but it turns out he took her ring thing the bones from her ring finger and took the rings and we see it later on that he has them wrapped up uh, and he you know kisses it so I guess it's you know in his own twisted way it's his way to keep her like he could have just taken her rings he took her finger because I guess there's almost like that psychopathy you know, um, his whole sh shtick as the bone collector that, you know, I guess because at least with her bone, he could always have it. Like, it's like having a piece of with her with you forever. So I guess that's another way to kind of potentially look at it in his own twisted way. He thinks probably thinks it's sweet, you know, once again, trying to keep her, you know, with him. But obviously, because of this whole situation, um, the FBI gets involved. In fact, Cutter, and I even love the fact this Cutter is actually impressed. She's like, the last time we met, you know, the fact that matters, you kind of work it at alone. But I see you took my advice and you've got a team by your side and everything. And she's like, I'm happy for about that. You know, and Amelia's so ecstatic because she like follows Cutter's work and everything. And obviously, you know, Amelia kind of like, you know, kind of breaks everything down about um, the, you know, profiles, the uh, Peter and basically explains that because uh, basically he needed an, like the way the killings were tied up like the fact of the matter is he got married in 2011 but he didn't start the killings again as like the he didn't start the killings as a bone collector until 2012 meaning in that time frame like she became his anchor to kind of really focus him on what he needed to do but now that anchor's gone he needed another anchor and that said anchor ended up being Lincoln something that he could focus on you know and obviously all that focus was you know his rage and everything which even had you know um Cutter being like, oh yeah, like, Emilio, uh, you know, you should, you know, about, you know, joining the FBI and stuff like that, kind of give me a call, which obviously we know that's where Amelia started with all this, she wanted to be a profiler and everything, so it's kind of interesting to see things, you know, to a certain extent kind of come full circle like that, but um, basically they end up piecing the clues together, um, and they end up finding out that um, the place, it's kind of going back to like what the... Uh, Bone Collector was doing before. The Bone Collector basically before went after Lincoln personally, and dis but pre previously it was about all of Lincoln's failures. This time it's just any connection to Lincoln. Um, this first place was like a gym he went to all the time and lo and behold, who's their cutter? And that's that's something I'm immediately talk about. He caught he got the um, caught a lot of people off guard. I kept feeling the entire time I was like, he's not alone, is he? He has a partner and stuff. We'll kind of circle back to that thought, but that was immediately in my head. I'm like, does he have a partner? Because it seems like we kept seeing him do the setup and stuff like that. But I'm like, how like how could you manage to? Do, I mean, I guess you're just sadly really good at what you do. But it's like, how do you have the time to kidnap Cutter, like catch her off guard like that? That's what I don't understand. And then continue your setups. Like he doesn't just do that to one person. Obviously, he does it to Salido later. Later on, we'll get to that soon enough, but that's why I'm like, you have to have a partner or something. Like, something just doesn't add up about that. Like I said, we'll circle back to that, you know, in the end. But sadly, like, the place was rigged, and Emilio's trying to save Cutter, but, and I and I think it's kind of a heartwarming thing to show you. Lincoln being like, no, don't do it. The fact of the matter, you rush in there, you, you're trying to save Cutter, you're going to end up like me. Because he cares about Amelia very wholeheartedly, and he doesn't want her to get hurt or even put in the same condition as him. I mean, worst case scenario, dead, you know? And, you know, Cutter refusing to let Amelia kind of suffer the same fate as, like, you know, Lincoln be caught in, you know, uh, the uh, Bone Collector's trap, you know, as a means of, like, oh, risk your own life trying to save someone else. So Cutter ends up, you know, killing herself in a process. And, you know, you have Eric stopping her from um, saving her. 
you know, because Amelia was like, no, Lincoln, I, I'm going to find a way. We're not going to let her die. And, you know, now it's a situation of like, you know, because obviously it hit Amelia hard about this whole situation. And so Lincoln, it's like, you know, she's like, OK, I know you're, you're going to tell me that there's no time for emotion. She's like, no, I'm not putting my emotions away. I'm really pissed right now. And if you need to be sad, then you be sad, and, you know. And the fact is, if you need, are angry, then you take that. And we kind of solve this case. And she's like. I'm fine with that. And it's like, no more calling him the Bone Collector. That's some, like, big and powerful name that he wanted to give himself. We know him for being the small man that he is, Peter. So that's who he is. Like, no more calling him the Bone Collector. Like, he's some boogeyman. He's just some guy that we're going to capture. And then they end up kind of piecing everything together. There was um, clues about, like... Um, the, what was it? The flowers, and then like the uh, there was like a card that was found, but it was like to a place, and we end up finding out that it's connected to a place that Lincoln was like, oh, Salito's previous marriage and everything, and Lincoln was his best man there. So it turns out Salito got captured. Once again, it's like, how did you know? And sadly, that was something Salito was dealing with because it was like, I was like, this could have easily gone sideways, but it's like, oh, there was no trap or anything, and that's why it was kind of like, wait, they just happened to find Salito there. Like, fine. I mean, granted, he was drugged and everything, but it's still like. How the hell, like, Toledo's alive, there's only two clues, it's like, this isn't me, because the uh, Bone Collector is kind of changing up, changing up his game and everything, but it turns out in the long run, that the fact is that it isn't just a um, situation of, like, there was only two clues, there was actually three clues, because it turned out, like, Toledo basically was, um, I forgot what it was, it was in the system, but basically it was poison, because Toledo took this personal, because for him it's like, he blamed himself for what happened to Lincoln before, and, you know, he's kind of blaming himself now because it's just like, this guy, I knew he was coming after Lincoln, the fact of the matter is, because, you know, Eric, uh, you know, uh, because um, Naya and Camden just happened to be in town because Camden had a game, because, you know, Naya had no idea what was going on with the bone collector and everything, and Lincoln had to tell her what's going on, you know, it's just like, uh, which I think the timing of that is interesting, but I mean, I guess it is just kind of sadly, like, it was just very unfortunate timing, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, find people to kind of, you know, get, get some well-trained people you trust to look after my family, but Eric's like, no, I got this, you know, and, you know, going to look after them personally, and so... All of that's happening, you know, like I said, Salido's just blaming himself of like everyone being a target and everything. Uh, and I didn't piece it together, you know, uh, about, you know, it's like he's going after everyone that's close to Lincoln, but I didn't piece it together, you know, that I should have I should have been on the lookout for myself because it's, you know, I'm someone that's close to Lincoln and everything. And he just blames himself that he was caught off guard, you know, Um but then it's like, yeah, because of the poison that's in his veins, he's kind of knocked out for a while. Even to the point Lincoln shows up personally. And it's like, you know, for him, it's a situation of, he, despite everything he did, he kept telling us, like, when he was in the hospital three years ago, after kind of waking up with his condition, the fact of the matter is he kept sending everyone away, and especially Salido, over and over again. It wasn't because he blamed Salido, but it was just the fact is he was just so angry about, you know, just what was taken from him by the bone collector and everything that knowing he can never do and never be what he was before but despite everything despite the constant being pushed away Salido kept uh, you know coming back around over and over again until he brought you into my life and here we are right now you know and you know he realizes now, you know, why Salito did what he did. It was just, it was for friendship, you know. And it's like realizing, like, he wanted to return that favor to be here for Salito as a friend, you know. And, you know, it's like, well, tell him that. And, you know, Lincoln's like, well, he already knows because I'm, you know, saying it right now, you know. So, it was kind of, you know, it's not just kind of sad. super sad to see uh, things kind of play out that uh, direction. But another aspect to this is the fact is, like, the poison in his veins was known as nightshade. And it's like, okay, what significance does it have to Lincoln? has no significance. Turns out it has much significance to um, Amelia. And that significance is the nightshade is the name. It's a current name of the place, the, the restaurant where her parents died. Uh, that's the current name of it and everything and it's like okay so and the bullet casing that was in his mouth it's because obviously that's how the particular gun it came from was the gun that killed her parents so when it's all said and done she ends up having to go to that restaurant initially Lincoln doesn't want her to go there because it's just like you know what could be waiting there let's send ESU but for her it's like no like they might tamper with the crime scene or something like that we got to get there and sadly it ends up in a, in a situation where um 
Amelia has to face like her past. And so it, cause we got a little insight to that situation at the beginning of the season, but to kind of see it fleshed out and kind of see it kind of beat for beat exactly what happens. And also shows you like Amelia remembering every detail. The fact is they kind of also introduced that makes me wonder if there are going to be future plot points for that. Cause I'm assuming cause like she knows his name and everything. He must be arrested. But the fact is they never really dived into like, I don't think she ever talked about it uh, even earlier in the season about what happened. I'm assuming he's still in jail, but I'm getting the feeling like there might be more of a tie-in to that later on. I don't know. But um, but it turns out she's in front of the booth where it all happened. And obviously, you know, she's kind of fighting past her tears because Lincoln's like, basically, like, you... Like, I know what this means to you, but basically, you know, you don't go anywhere in this place until, like, ESU told you it's okay. But it turns out the booth is booby-trapped. There was a bomb because we had actually seen him working on You kind of figured it was a bomb because, like, the way he was so careful with the suitcase, especially when he was clicking it up to extend the, um, the roller part of it, you can tell, like, oh, he was very careful about it. So I'm like, oh, that has to be a bomb. And now we see it kind of come full circle because this is literally the same situation Lincoln was in three years ago. And Amelia is trying to figure out how to disarm it, but it's like, but now Lincoln's overthinking everything too because he's like, previously it was a white cord, but maybe he thinks I'm gonna think it's the white cord, it's gonna be another cord, or maybe he's gonna make me think that I'm overthinking it, and you know, but he couldn't tell, and Amelia's pan uh, panicking too. But then we get the twist that the uh, bone collector found its way there, and I'm like, how did you? I'm like, how are you doing this? How are you getting past security and everything? I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. We'll circle back to that later on. But the fact of the matter is, um, he's got a knife on Claire, and he basically disconnects Amelia from um, Lincoln because he wants Lincoln to watch her die. It's, it's like, oh, it's going to be a very painful death because basically it's like no matter what she does. And Amelia ends up figuring it out herself like, right, this is a game I'm not supposed to win. All of these wires are going to set it off like that uh, it, That um, officer stepping on it, setting it up is was the the beginning point but um it was her stepping down wasn't going to charge because the whole point is for it to keep, keep clicking down and for her to like pull a wire or something to kind of finally set it well because it turns out it's not even just the timer because the bone collector himself has the timer so initially um I'm trying to remember the, uh, the uh, way things ended up going down. But the fact of the matter is Amelia ends up getting everyone out of there. Um, and she's like, Lincoln, I, I got to figure this out. And then, you know, the bone collector explodes a bomb. And Lincoln, at, it seems like he's having an attack. And because he because he doesn't want to kill Lincoln, he wants to make Lincoln, Lincoln suffer. And it's like, I'm not going to let him just die easily. So Claire's there to kind of help him. But then Claire kind of gets the look from Lincoln like, you know what to do. She takes the scissors and staff. The moment he kind of turned around and swung, I was scared for a second because I thought like maybe in the last second he got too close to Claire and ended up slitting her throat or something. That's what I was nervous about. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Claire's good. Claire's good. And because, you know, Lincoln faked everything. But it turns out also Amelia isn't dead because I like the fact that she knew that the bone collector was most likely watching. So she put the camera down and acted like she was still there to kind of keep him off guard to make him think he won so obviously she sent cops over to um their place and after Claire had stabbed them the cops had started approaching so he ended up leaving so luckily they were both alive at the end of you know at the end of the day you know so it, it things could have ended very badly but at the same time this is all going down you know um Salido ends up figuring out like piecing it together like what uh went down like the fact is how you know the bone collector knows what he knows about their case files and everything and then it's like oh yeah that um detective he was talking to that we kind of found out about last episode i'm surprised well i guess there's like no point of going after his cousin because his cousin's like well he's already exposed my identity so killing him now kind of serves no purpose other than just i don't know. i guess it's just it'd be too much trouble to go after him so but uh nevertheless uh, they end up finding detective because at first it's like, oh, his phone's in the back. See, that's not a good sign. They open up the trunk. I was like, you're gonna find him in there. Oh, you didn't. So, uh, nope, he's in the trash. It turns out, in fact, his nails are missing and stuff like that. He was tortured, and it's like, okay, because at first they're thinking like maybe he was working alongside of him, but it's like obviously he had no idea because basically it turns out it was a bit of a game of like, oh, let's figure out this stuff before the detectives actually figure it out. But sadly, he didn't know who he was playing the game with. He had no idea that, that you know Peter, you know this person he knew from being a part of you know that lab system and stuff like that. He didn't know that Peter was you know uh, the uh, bone collector. But the moment he found out, you know he wouldn't tell the bone collector what he need to know and it turns out what he had access to 
uh, where's their files, hence why he knew like where Salito got married and everything about Amelia so quickly. And so that explains, I guess that also explains why he was able to kind of get the uh, jump on all of them because he knew exactly where to be to kind of catch them off guard. Like, well, well, specifically, but that's why I'm still kind of like, that's so much for one person to do. I mean, I get it. Like he has enough time to do this, but like literally the entire city is hunting you. How do you have the time to set this all up? That's why I'm kind of getting a feeling like, especially the way things end, like I said, we'll get to it soon enough, but that's why I'm kind of like, like I said, we'll circle back to it. Uh, but it's the whole Eric situation because Eric is moving um, Naya and Camden. And the moment it's like they're trying to get in contact with Eric and the guy who's over the radio is like, yeah, we can't talk about this over the radio. I'm like, oh, that's the bone collector. I was like, oh, please don't, please don't. Eric's about to get, I was like, I was hoping like maybe the other dude would get out the car to check things and Eric would stay in the car and drive away. But it's like Eric goes to check and it's like, oh, Eric gets shot in the leg. And it's like, oh, God. Uh, dude didn't do what Eric told him to do. He was like, despite what happens to me, he said, get them out of here. Dude didn't do it. Sadly, the driver ended up getting killed. But um, he ends up giving Naya something, tells him to hold on to it. And by the time we catch up with him again, like, you know, sadly, Eric's dead. Because under the situation, like, well, you know, because, like, the last conference, you know, I, it was a death that I wasn't expecting. Because I'll, I'll talk about it. Like, it seemed like at points in the show, and this could have easily just been me reading too much into it. I kind of expected there to be a um, Eric and Amelia thing. That was that was just me. I just felt like there was something there, a little spark or something. Like whether they focus on it or not, I just I didn't expect them to straight up kill someone from this team like that. I didn't see that coming. I thought like, oh no, the entire team would say that. it's like no, Eric's dead. I'm like, holy shit! Like, and and you know, and it breaks you know, Salito's heart because it's like one partner of his ended up in that condition. You know. Uh, Lincoln's in the condition he's in, but also, like, Eric's dead. It's just, like, you know, he's kind of blaming himself, probably, like, I wasn't here from a partner, and just, like, you know, it's like, we got, yeah, I, I want to destroy this bastard. I want to make him pay for what he's done, you know? And Eric's trying to say something. He's saying, watch, and they're not figuring out what he's trying to say. At the same time, you know, it's something I didn't talk about, too. It's, like, obviously, like, you can't discount, like, Felix and Kate kicking everything into overdrive, piecing all these clues together and stuff like that. Um, you kind of feel bad because obviously it feels like Lincoln's always harsher on Felix, but I think it's just because Felix ends up kind of being in a situation where a lot of, like, because obviously him and Kate always end up having, like, very important clues to figure out. I mean, granted, like, that photograph and everything, Felix is able to kind of, because it was like an old school photograph that was, like, part of Salito's, um clues and everything but he kind of figured out a way to kind of like make the picture pop up and everything but it's just like it just you kind of felt bad because it felt like Lincoln was specifically chewing Felix out but it's just because you know for him it's like the bone collector had already taken so much from him it's like I'm not about to let him take any more from me you know uh his ex-fiance or you know his child you know so it was that type of situation on the subject of Eric, this actually kind of sack we learned, like, his dad was a cop, his dad ended up dying when he was young. We didn't really go too much into his mom, but they do kind of explain that his, both his parents were dead. And the fact of the matter is having to look after his siblings, and obviously, for, and once again, that kind of plays into why I was talking about, because Amelia was like, oh yeah, that was something me and Eric, you know, ended up having in common. That's why I kind of felt like there was going to be something with that, but it turned out to be the case. But then Salito remembered, it's like, yeah, there was that stupid watch that Eric kept bragging about that he recently got. He did didn't have it and they tr were able to try because apparently there was like a package that they were supposed to get that was supposed to be the third clue but it wasn't going to get there soon enough and you know being able to track it because I think like the guy that was supposed to have it had it in his basement or something like that so it wasn't getting to them like they needed it to but they didn't need that third clue because um they tracked where um uh, Salito's watch last was and it gave them idea of where everyone was but they were able to kind of piece it together because it's like alright this is all about fear and everything right so it's like what is Camden afraid of because like what did he do you know because he threatened Claire to take her outside because he knows her being um Agoraphobic, and the fact of the matter is, he took Amelia to the place that gave her the most trauma, where her parents died. So it's like, where's the fear? And for Camden, it was like the his greatest fear was seeing his dad the way he was. So it's like not the hospital, but the place where it ended up being, you know, and ended up happening. And obviously, Lincoln's told to go there alone, and they're like, you're not going to do this alone. He's like, you're right, I'm not. The fact of the matter is, three years ago, I couldn't catch the um, bone collector because I was working alone, but he was like, I'm not working alone. So with your help, I know, you know, he knows he's going to be able to get them, him this time. 
And obviously, you know, when they when they do have that final, you know, confrontation and everything, it's incredible. Like, once again, the Bone Collector trying to, especially when he explains, like, why he's so pissed at Lincoln. Because for him, it's just, it's because Lincoln just thinks he's all high and mighty. But it's like, oh, like, the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, it's kind of repeating history. Because, you know, for him, he thinks, I think, uh, you know, because this whole thing is about proving himself smarter. That, oh, I'm, because that was something he was bringing up to Lincoln. It's like, oh, I, I am smarter. It's like, he's like, all right, you won. He's like, yeah, I know I won. Because his plan also at the end of the day was, oh, yeah, I know I'm not going to make it out of this alive. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a situation where I walk away victorious and I'm going to die here. But then, you know, me and you are going to die here, but I'm still going to die the victor. And it's going to be kind of like it's kind of like what was I watching? I was watching something recently where they made reference to Sherlock Holmes that apparently there's a story where like Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty kind of die at the same time and together like the greatest detective and the greatest criminal. I forgot what it was that I was watching that was referencing that but I think it's kind of supposed to be a very similar thing in this regard I guess because he's you know supposed to be the Moriarty. I mean I'm sure he would kind of think of himself as that. Hell who knows like he might even think of himself as Sherlock Holmes in, case, in this case and think of um, Lincoln as Moriarty. Whatever the case may be. Um that was his plan, you know, to kind of be like his final victory because it's like you don't actually – I win and they can't arrest me, so I kind of walk away from this victorious. But we kind of – he finally explains like why this is all about because we knew it had something to do with like – because like the, the one time we saw in Lincoln's past his interaction with uh, Peter – it was that whole thing of like, it's like, oh, yeah, you're pretty, like, I forgot what it was, but Peter was saying something, and Lincoln was like, I know, and just kind of walked away super cocky, and I was like, is that really all that was? But it turns out there was a particular case that it was supposed to figure out, and he fi he's like, I figured it out first, but when I was about to go there to tell so-and-so who, you know, who the killer is, you barged past me and did it. He's like, I figured it out first. You kind of almost kind of being like you cheated. But for Lincoln, it's like the fact of the matter is if you were as great as you claim to be, you would have gotten there way before I ended up saying anything. Like, don't blame your weakness and your slowness on me, essentially. And the fact of the matter is, and that obviously agitates him more because that, I mean, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't realize that he's so off his own game that he's doing all this killing and stuff like that, but he's not as calculated as he was before that he is a little, he is, because for, for him, this is the end game. The fact of the matter is, it all comes down to this, you know, the, you know, making it poetic to take away more from Lincoln, you know, especially in a place that he, you know, did this, you know, left Lincoln in the condition he's in. But the fact of the matter is, you know, Lincoln was also able to get to him because it's like, oh, because Emilio reminded him, it's like, yeah, don't buy into his BS because he was killing long before you two met in the academy. And for him, it's a situation of like, I, you know, I don't know why I did it. I liked it because it's like, because for Lincoln, it's like, oh, you want to blame your trauma from whatever childhood that made you into what you are. Everyone has stuff that, you know, they have their impulses. They have everything, you know, people come from bad backgrounds. That doesn't turn them into serial killers like you. You did all that you've done because you like it. And he even kind of referenced like, oh, what about your wife? You know, he was like, no, she died because of you. It's like, no, because you got so caught. Because once again, he's, he's going to, because rather than being like, oh, I killed her because I had to save her from what was coming. I don't, you know, um, she didn't, I didn't want her to be alive. But it's like, Link is kind of pushing it to be like, no, you just want to kill her. You always did. You just, you, you know, but for him, it's like, I loved her. You kind of took my love away from me. But because it was, because he needed someone to blame because he can't just blame himself. Because, you know, in his mind, it's like, it's her fault because she found the photos. But the only reason why she found the photos is because of Lincoln. It's like, well, you're missing one factor is that you are the reason why she found the photos because you were sloppy. But he was like, no, 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 no. I was off my game because of Lincoln, because of Lincoln and this and that. And it's just like you got outplayed in the game. And the fact of the matter is you want to blame Lincoln for what you did. You know, you didn't have to kill her, but you made that choice. You made it seem like you were going to let her go. There was a part of you that was, but then you decided to kill her. You're making it seem like it's like, oh, you did it to because of pieces, you know, you wanted to, you know, give her peace and everything. It's like, no, you did it because you wanted to, because you couldn't let uh, a piece to this puzzle escape you without you having full control of him because he's a control freak and all of it, you know, the, you know, the details and everything. But luckily, Felix was able to kind of tamper with the device so Camden didn't drop. But, you know, He's like, all right, I'm going to deal with this yourself. It's Alito. He's watching. Well, watch as I kill your partner. And he, before he could stab Lincoln, Lincoln bites him. And I was like, I was like, oh, that's not going to stop him for long. But then it turns out he pulled the camera off. 
but then the moment he pulls it out, it's like, oh, there was a needle attached. I was like, they injected you or something. He's like, what did you do? And it was a paralytic. And it's like, oh, we're not killing you. Would just be too easy. Now we're going to put you in the same condition that you left me, kind of leaving you in this, you know, pathetic condition. And you're going to be locked away for a very, very long time. And they're like, Lincoln, you did it. He's like, no, we did it. And they stood there over him victorious as a team, you know. So luckily, when it's all said and done, you know, Camden was saved. You know, I was saved. And, you know, the fact is that um, Camden has this whole conversation about like, oh, maybe we can move back now that everything's OK. And, his, you know, I think Lincoln was just kind of like, well, his mom's like, we'll talk about that. He's like, yeah, you just get better, um, which that kind of circles back to what's kind of happens at the end of the episode. But obviously they do a send off to um, Eric because because he's like, you know. Lincoln's like, if it wasn't for Eric, you know, he protected my, you know, he protected Naya and Camden. I, I owe, I owe him a debt. I can never, you know, essentially repay it. And, you know, it's like, and once again, I've talked that before, I talked about that before in TV shows, like the whole end of watch thing. I just, I don't know. That always kind of breaks my heart. You know, it's just like, cause I, I think that's probably is based on a real cop thing. Like I see it pop, pop, pop up in enough, um, crime drama police shows and stuff like that. So that makes me think it probably is a real thing, which is just makes it even more depressing. Like, it's beautiful in its own right, but obviously it's just super sad and depressing in the grand scheme of things. Once again, it's just like, it just, I did not expect, you know, um, Eric to die, so there's that. But then, like, while they're at the bar and everything, there's a package, and it's like, wait, this is the package that was supposed to be the third clue, but it's like, why is it here? There's a phone inside and they're talking to someone else. Now, this one makes me think that there was someone else at play here because who else would know where that package is except for someone that's in touch with a bone collector? So it's like, oh, like it might be that thing of like, what was that I was watching recently? Oh, I guess it'd be kind of like uh, Prodigal Son. How in uh, Prodigal Son, like uh, Martin uh, Whitley uh, was with, um, what's his name? His fake name was Paul. I'm, I'm forgetting his real name, but it was like that. Uh, the other killer that like uh, Malcolm went on a hunting trip with him and his dad. That whole thing. Like I'm wondering, did over the years or at some point in time, did um, the bone collector find an ally or did he find a mentor? Is that why? Because remember his de his earlier murders and stuff like that weren't perfect. So the fact of the matter is maybe someone, maybe he just learned along the way or maybe someone else taught him, you know, so maybe like that's why, like I said, I brought it up earlier. I could be mistaken. Maybe he did accomplish all that on his own, but I feel like that was so much that it feels like he had to have help to do everything, to set everything up the way he did, especially considering once again, the entire city was hunting him. He had to have somebody that was able to kind of sneak about and do whatever they need to do without being noticed. You know, I feel like, you know, especially with his face literally plastered all over the place. So that's what that makes me think. So I'm thinking that's where we're tying in here. And then obviously a body gets thrown from, uh, I guess, on top of the building and lands on the car. At first, I won't lie to you. At first, I was like, is that her sister, Rachel? Turns out not to be the case. But there was a part of me that was like, oh, like what? But it's like, oh, it's basically another killer um, being like, oh, let's start up this new game. Because he's also like, you know me, which I'm like, what the hell is that about? But I guess that means, you know, because maybe it's a situation where the bone collector wasn't just one person. Maybe the entire time the bone collector's always been two people. But because of who, you know, Peter is, maybe he always took credit for being the one person with all of it, you know, behind all of this, you know. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. Maybe this other person is just someone else entirely different. But you kind of see the setup for things kind of going forward. Uh, because I know the bone collector, like, because I know, obviously, Link, I think I talked about this in a uh, premiere, but Lincoln Rhyme is based on a series of novels. And so, I, uh, if I remember correctly, The Bone Collector is the first novel, so there's plenty of other novels to kind of build off of. I'm not sure how many are in general. I, I got a glimpse of it. I'm sure I, I, I can find it if I just looked it up, but, um, you know, I'll look it up uh, later. But uh, it kind of sets things up for a very interesting potential second season. At the time of me recording this, Lincoln Rhyme hasn't been canceled nor renewed for a second season. So I really hope that it does get renewed for a second season. I'm curious to see if going forward they change the subtitle for it since the Bone Collector is kind of dealt with. So or will they still keep that? Because I mean, like I said, because it's based on a Lincoln Rhyme series of novels. So they could be like Lincoln Rhyme colon insert name of next novel and make that be the second season. But obviously there's a lot of stuff from this season that they can carry over. Once again, they've dealt with the whole Amelia thing, but I feel like there's still more story to kind of tell with that. Like in particular, 
her parents kill her, like maybe having to confront him in some shape or form again. Like once again, we never found out like maybe he was executed. I doubt it, but maybe he's still in prison. Like I still feel like there's probably like keys to like, I'm, I'm curious to see like what a second season, you know, would do. Cause obviously they've also set up the whole thing of like, well, she could be, you know, profiling for the FBI and stuff like that. Will she kind of take up that opportunity to kind of do that while she's still working with Lincoln? I mean, because it's like they put away one notorious serial killer that had been hunt well, that's been hunted for years, and now we're kind of jumping right into another one that, hey, maybe once again, it depends on how they kind of want to go about revealing this situation. Like I said, is this going to be like, oh, this person's been working with the Bone Collector the entire time? Has this been a serial killer that no one's known that's existed entire um, this entire questions like that, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And obviously, there's a whole situation of the Bone Collector isn't dead. He's in prison. He's locked up. He's paralyzed. I'm assuming that paralytic they gave him was going to be a permanent situation. I don't think there's any remedying that. But it might be a thing of like, sadly, they'll have to go to him for help. They'll, it might be kind of like a Hannibal Lecter type of situation of like, hello, Clarice. Of like, hello, Lincoln. Hello, Amelia. The people that defeated me. And like, oh, you have to come to me for help to figure out who this is because said killer has a connection to me. But he's like, oh, I'm not going to make this easy for you what you've done to me i'm gonna make you suffer and all the people you care about which kind of takes away the whole thing of candor like oh maybe you can move back it's like no because it kind of shows that like lincoln's always going to be tied to this world the fact of the matter is there's always going to be another case there's always going to be another murder that people are always going to come after him and his family will always be targeted especially how close things were this time i'm sure lincoln's not going to take that chance again but that might be a thing that you know now he's like well are you you know you're basically gonna have to choose again like you know because because he had talked about it before the reason why she left initially is because he lied he didn't tell her the kind of danger that they were in because he was so kind of full of himself and thinking that he'd be able to protect him and stuff like that so he lied uh obviously for good reasons so they wouldn't worry but also it comes off very self-centered because it's like oh you think you're so good that you you know that you didn't think they'd be dragged into it so but lincoln has changed over the course of this season and so I, i'm sure he would not take that chance again so stuff like that kind of crosses you know my mind too but uh, I, i'd love to see ultimately what they do with the second season what the cases would look like what this particular overarching case would look like in the second season you know so hopefully we do get a second season but we'll have to wait and see but really, that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.